let's um let's hit uh what you're going to be uh, releasing, you have the Journal of Consciousness Studies, and we have that. Um, the, so tell us about what, like, what is, um, how do we test the, like, the hypothesis? Because we've been, you know, yeah, we've been talking about it so much, um, living mirrors theory. So what, what do we do for um, uh, proper, like, is there a randomized control trial? Like, well, yeah, yeah. And, or, or do we have to use yeah. sim simulation technology to, to like, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, yeah, I would say computational modeling, like simulating and, um, would be one step, but that's going to be, I mean, you know, technology is increasing exponentially, right? So maybe it's not that far away right now. The simulations we can do are so puny we we can't simulate a single cell like it, it's too complex a, a single cell um but we can do kind of quite simple simulations with this stuff um so what would be nice would be to be able to simulate a single cell um and then so say you have a bacteria and you could effectively simulate based on its statistical physics the patterns in its environment it's a fight you, you you find out its fitness functions and you model what you think its structure of its consciousness should be like you know what dimensions of kind of photo you know of like light sensitivity does it have and then you do behavioral experiments where you would you would basically test it flashlights make it respond for nutrients and stuff and just see like does the theory predict the structure of consciousness and that would be the kind of gold standard way of really you know it's not a um i guess yeah in that in that picture you would be able to just see like do does it fall out of the theory do, does it match up if it doesn't match up the theory is probably not right um but the other kind of more gradual approach which is similar is that the the actual um the kind of mathematical basis of the theory is not some um kind of fringe you know bit of bit of science it's actually the emerging mainstream picture of how the brain works is it's been described as kind of uh, hierarchical inference it's like this idea of the bayesian brain it's what's called the free energy principle all of this stuff is is about using exactly the same mathematics as applies to the single cell um to understand how the brain works and this this was best fleshed out by a guy called Carl Friston uh, who's a neuroscientist at the same university as me who's done some wonderful work here and and this is to me is, is you know more and more people are lining up to, to think of the brain in these terms and so the th the living mirror theory just fits perfectly alongside it it just says here whilst you're doing your neuroscience studies on the human brain as well as just saying okay i know a human brain is conscious but I, I don't know what to say about any other living system. This theory gives you a way of saying, well, alongside your experiments, you can say, this is a way of thinking about which systems are conscious, why they're conscious, where, you know, where in the universe they're conscious. And so what I hope is that people will gradually just kind of, in the same way with uh, the theory of evolution, people, there was no, there was no experiment to test it really, but the kind of gradual, just seeing how it made sense of everything, it just fit with all the data. Everyone gradually was like, oh, okay, this is the right way of thinking about it. That's where I'm at personally with being like, okay, as someone who's always been passionate about trying to understand the mystery of consciousness, you know, I've read the different things on offer and they don't, they just don't sit right with me. If they had sat right with me, you know, I would have stuck with those, but I mean, this isn't controversial. No one, you know, yeah, we're not in a situation where we think consciousness is solved, right? <laughs> like um, there is nothing where everyone's like, yep, this is definitely the answer. So that would be my, um, my hope. But it, the problem is that it really hinges on the, the radical change in humanity in the kind of consciousness of humanity that you described, like what, you know, having more people realize what they really are. There's, there's a sense in which, so we spoke about the idea that there is this uh, evolutionary process. There is kind of becoming and, and we get more and more ability to create order and control the world. And that's, what's kind of got us to where we are now, but we're living so much in that, side of things we're living so much in separation and control that we have these you know societies that are structured around progress 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 you know use humans as machines to kind of to generate more material stuff and and we're not balanced enough into the kind of the being side of things when you when you're in the kind of you know the being side of things that's when you can look at a plant and say oh you're me like we're the same thing I totally gather you would be conscious. So I think most humans have this kind of tunnel vision of separation where after generation and generation of, of going on this kind of progress mode with all of its kind of feelings of trauma and, and being distant from the rest of the natural world, we feel like the, the punchline of consciousness has to be that we are special, that we are different, 
that our separation, our felt separation from nature is a good thing ultimately, because we are, it's what gives us our consciousness. It's, you know, we're these, these truly different things. But I, I think we're just, that perspective is one of this kind of stress traumatized dissociation and tunnel vision. And if we all come back into just being, we recognize our unity with nature. We, we, we would look at a plant and recognize it as an extension of, of the same thing that created us. And suddenly you're like, oh, okay, I, I get it. Plants can be conscious, that totally makes sense. And we see this in people who engage in spiritual practice or after psychedelics, and they really, they kind of see through the kind of the delusional structures in consciousness for what consciousness really is. And they're brought into this being mode more. Um, yeah, and I think if, so I think actually <laughs> people widespread, if it turns out I'm true, I, I, my theory is true or I'm correct, I think the limiting factor will be that perspective, will be people having a kind of knee jerk reaction of like, no way is, is that true? Because I, my feeling of separation is, I'm so attached to it. Same, same thing with Darwin and, and evolution, right? It's like, don't tell me I'm the same as an ape. Like, I don't like to hear that because uh, I have this real feeling of like not being at peace and struggling and being separate. Um, so yeah, it's quite a, maybe unlike, this is why consciousness is such a tricky thing to address, I think, because it's so close to home. We have, it's not only to do with what we are, it's to do with what reality is. And so we have such emotional investment in, in what this answer is and whether it satisfies us that I think um, unlike other problems, there's, yeah, that could be a big boundary to whether or not it's ever accepted as, as correct, but also it could be wrong. Two ways uh, to hit the ball back there. The first one is, uh, yeah, super eloquently described with the tunnel vision of separation and that slowly becoming more and more augmented and awakened uh, and harmonized, especially between um, the importance of, of seeing the, the collective symphony at the same time as seeing a unique gift and artistic contribution. Those two things together are critical. And then on the first part that you mentioned, let's talk about the mathematics here, I think this is very interesting. Chow Tang, when we had him on the show in China, he was so um, insightful and visionary about the fact that we are literally going to need new math to understand how life works. And I think that's so profoundly interesting because like you described, even given such extreme successes with computational capacities, how do we actually simulate the inner workings of even a single cell and how it interacts with its environment? And then how we can basically prove the idea is that, that you can prove there's like a mathematics of consciousness of that cell that when it does get a like a light source as an input that it does register that and that it makes an output and like that's the idea of a of a of a of a, an attempt at a an, a deeper living mirror theory of understanding and how a multi cell organism has like a slightly more complex mathematical computation of its of understanding its of its environment is that the general trajectory alongside what mainstream is yeah i think where we're currently at the maths is 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 coming along well actually like so this again this is mainly the work of carl friston and what's called the free energy principle um and the existing state of it is i mean it is complicated maths um and so it's but it's it's not um you know it's 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 not like inventing a whole new branch of mathematics i guess but it's uh fundamentally the the idea is that if that in order to exist, you need to minimize the kind of disorder in your boundary. If you don't minimize the disorder in your boundary, you're not going to exist. You're going to dissolve into everything else. <laughs> and if you look at that kind of physically, the mathematics describing that physically, it's the same. You can rearrange it. And it basically says that it's the same as what's called Bayesian inference, which is, again, this, I mentioned the Bayesian brain, the idea that this is just a kind of branch of mathematics that's to do with how you build models of the world, how you test it against um, hypotheses, how you test your hypotheses against data. Data. And in my in my theory, what I should actually make clear is that the math describes the the contents of consciousness, the structure. So in this picture, you'd be able to say, okay, that primate with its three different types of photoreceptors, color sensitive photoreceptors, has trichromatic vision. It has these kind of three dimensions of color, and we can map out this kind of structure. The fact of consciousness is not something that can be, you know, it, it that's where you need to zoom out to this kind of to the universe really to the picture of the environment and the organism and like a reflection it exists in the interaction between the 
the organism and its environment. So the question of, to go back to what you said before about can it ever be proven, the idea, you, you would never be able to prove this organism has consciousness, this organism doesn't have consciousness. This is just, you know, one of the features of consciousness is private, right? And I can speculate that you have it because your physiology is so similar to mine. It would be really unsurprising, it would be very surprising if you had a similar, you're a similar organism without consciousness. That would just seem, would seem so, so weird that I'm, I'm willing to grant it to you. Um, and then with a theory, you can start to think, okay, I'm willing to grant it to these other organisms for these reasons but there can never be you know i can never prove that you're not a robot you know like or a zombie is the kind of philosophical term for a being with, with no with no consciousness um and so the mathematics would really be making progress in terms of cashing out whether we've got a handle on how the contents are structured but then if if, if the theory manages to pull that off then it's good to assume that it's it's right in some fundamental way Okay, so living mirror theory is heavily grounded in the mathematics of the uh, structure of consciousness. Well, no, so I, I would say the basic insight is is just the conceptual one we said before. Like, you can really, we could not talk about thermodynamics at all, and we could just say, if you're going to exist, you need to know what's going on around you. And I think for some people, they might think, yeah, that makes sense. Like, that's a, that, that makes more sense than maybe, I don't know, saying... If your brain oscillates at forty hertz, then you're conscious. That seems that doesn't seem to hold any intuitive so, so, power so is it, explanation. Is it is it then fair to say that it's the mathematics of the living system and the way that it is coupled with its environment? Yeah. So it, yeah. So so the mathematics only comes in when it, when you know it was it's a scientific theory. So if you want to test it, you want to you want to get precise. That's where it comes in. But you don't need to worry about yeah. the actual kind of Okay, you know, that level of granularity to 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 feel you've got a handle on what I'm what I'm claiming. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's kind of where we started. Um, is having the handle on it without the math, but then I see where um where the, because I'm so interested in the actual process of getting people around the world to go okay what we're triangulating on and what 5,000 plus years of metaphysical lineages on consciousness across the world are triangulating on is the exact same thing. And um, that, that's why um, I, I want the math to, to succeed. I want the hypotheses to be uh, proven over time uh, and successfully uh over and over and over again. Um, yeah, and that's why I ask about the math and, and the complicated process of doing the simulations of the coupling of the living system with its um, environment. And then kind of like the, the idea is that the math, you're, we're in a sense, we're watching the changes of the math. We're watching those changes to determine. In consciousness, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, it gets a bit, uh, I need to be careful because if, if it's like you're watching, it's like you're conscious of these other things. So I, I would say, I would say the math is the math and the theory are always just maps for the territory, right? So this is a, a picture where it's not like consciousness is just information processing. It's not like the computer analogy for the brain where you just assume it's this very thin kind of, uh, description of what's going on. It's really a body. It's like you have this real like existence that's happening right now, and there's a real process. And when you have a system that believes things about in about the world around it, this is what it feels like. Um, and the theory and and mathematical descriptions are just maps. They're just saying here's how it should play out if we've got a really if we've got a handle on what's going on. This is what it what it should look like. Um, so the consciousness itself is is embodied in the world. And this, then the theories are just their descriptions. They're they're a language game ultimately, um, which is why if you if you forced me to choose between science and spirituality, I would choose to just meditate the rest of my life away <laughs> instead of uh, the you know, the game of of trying to put it into words and in other forms of languages is, is not as uh, it's not as real. It's it's a story. It's ultimately a story.